Calls are growing for a ceasefire in the Middle East as the Israeli Air Force says it hit more Hamas targets overnight. Hamas has signaled it would end its attacks if Israel were to meet its conditions, but Israel is showing no signs of letting up. Meanwhile, President Biden has put pressure on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to end the fighting. At least 200 people have been killed and 58,000 have been displaced due to the violence. Matt Gutman has more from Israel. Hey, Terry and Diane. Yeah, very interesting call. The fourth call between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. There's a lot of water under the bridge between those two. Uh, Netanyahu completely snubbed Biden a few years ago when he was vice president visiting Israel, essentially humiliating him. President Biden has been very patient, it seems, giving uh, the Israeli government and its military time to complete uh, a large number of airstrikes on Gaza. But today he changed the tone in that that readout from the White House, he essentially gave Israel something of an ultimatum, saying that those airstrikes have to stop, or at least we should see a significant de-escalation today. For what it's worth, the Israeli press is reporting that by 6 a.m. local time tomorrow, there will be some sort of a ceasefire. That's 11 p.m. in Washington. So maybe they're going to just slip a few more uh, air assaults under the radar uh, as the clock ticks down. Uh, that's unclear. Um, we do know that early this morning, uh, Israel again launched about 50 uh, warplanes over Gaza. Uh, there was a 25-minute bombardment. Israel again saying that it was targeting Hamas's network of tunnels that honeycombed the Gaza Strip. Increasingly sophisticated, uh, and I think... From what we understand, Hamas has been surprised that Israel has been ever able to so precisely target those tunnels. Israel also going after Hamas leaders. One thing that is notable, you may be able to see all the lights behind me. We haven't seen that in the past several days. Lots of lights turned off. Um, the idea was to not give Hamas gunners and those rocket launchers in Gaza any opportunity uh, to use them as a target. And over the past several days, there have been virtually no um, rocket attacks on Israel's very densely populated central area, the metro Tel Aviv area. So maybe this is a sign that finally in the 10th day of the conflict going into the 11th day here, Maybe there will be some sort of change uh, or at least a significant de-escalation. Um, one other thing to note, and we have noticed that there are Israeli battle tanks right on the border with Gaza, but it does not appear at this point that they are going to be used. There has been no additional call-up of, re of reserves or any mustering of troops around there. So. I think everybody here in the region feels like it may be, might be time quite soon for this to come to an end, and certainly everybody here on the ground hopes that that is so after uh, well over 230 Palestinian deaths in Gaza and the West Bank, 13 Israelis killed, and I think critical to note, nearly 60,000 Palestinians left homeless so far. Terry, Diane. All right, hopefully nearing a ceasefire there. Matt Gutman in Israel, thank you. All right, that is a significant number and sign of the suffering in Gaza. For more on this crisis, I want to bring in Abe's News contributor on national security and military issues, Steve Ganyard. Steve, thanks for being here. So Hamas is signaling uh, uh, they want to cease fire, as uh, Matt just told us. They're kind of winding down, targeting Tel Aviv and other population centers. President Biden's leaning on Israel. Do you think the Israeli defense forces have accomplished what they want to accomplish? Will we get a ceasefire? Um, so the answer to those two questions, Terry, is probably no and yes. So no in the fact that the IDF has not done all that they uh, wanted to do. Uh, I think that they were quite shocked at the number of missiles that were shot at Israel. Uh, they've now estimated tens of thousands of these rockets uh, in Hamas's hands. And so what they want to do is play for time uh, and say that uh, we need to take out the tunnels and the storage areas of these rockets that are going to continue to threaten Israel. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as you allude to, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is getting uh, pressure to uh, to find a, a way to get to a ceasefire, and so the political is going to push the uh, the military, I think, to do something that they uh, that they would recommend against. And, and Steve, we heard that Biden is taking a tougher tone with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now, but Netanyahu still says that he's quote determined to continue this operation until its objective is achieved, and that he's especially appreciates the support of President Biden for the state of Israel's right to self defense. What do you make of that? 
Dan, I don't speak Hebrew, but I think a good translation there is, uh, thanks for your interest in Israel's defense, uh, we've got it. Um, and so that was uh, President Biden uh, at least taking one step towards a you will stop. Uh, but he did leave wiggle room for Netanyahu to say, OK, thanks, we'll think about it, we'll take it under consideration. So a little bit of back and forth here. There was probably some behind-the-scenes discussions about, look, we need a little bit more time. We had no idea there were this many rockets that we need to take care of. U.S. says, you got to stop. And so there was probably some negotiation, and I think that's what you were seeing publicly. And Israel has been dealing with now thousands of rockets raining down uh, on that country, all of them unguided, we should say, which, which would amount to a, a, a war crime. You have to try to at least to target something military, and every rocket coming out isn't just looking at for population centers. And I've been struck by the, the role that Iron Dome, uh, Israel's uh, missile defense system, some of these pictures have been amazing to see that I, I believe it's more than 90 percent of those rockets have been intercepted. How has it impacted the conflict? Were you surprised at the success rate? Yeah, it, Iron Dome's been uh, around for a while, Terry, and it's. Uh, I've been up front with one uh, right on the front lines in in Gaza. It's a pretty extraordinary system. Uh, the Israelis developed it. The U.S. paid for a lot of it. So it, think about what the technology is that goes in behind uh, each one of these intercepts that you're seeing. Those very dramatic intercepts. Uh, there's a radar that's associated with it, and as soon as a rocket is launched, a very small rocket, relatively for for radar to see, that the computer on board that system calculates where, based on how fast that missile's traveling, the angle, uh, where it's actually going to land. And it says it's not going to land anywhere that's going to hurt anybody. It's going to land in an open field. And it disregards those that it knows because it has the whole, all of Israel plotted out on where the people are. And it disregards the ones that it knows will land in an open field. Of the ones that it knows could hit a population center, it prioritizes that. So you see some of this video, you see dozens, literally dozens of rockets coming up out of Gaza. And each of those computers on each of those uh, Iron Dome batteries is computing which one's the highest priority, which is going to get here first. So in, in some ways, it's a technological marvel. Now, we're not admiring war, war technology here. What we're saying is that it's preventing a broader conflict. Think about what if would happen if Iron Dome were not there. If Iron Dome were not there, the Israeli uh, government would have been pushed into invading Gaza and taking care of the 3,000 rockets that would have landed in population centers in Israel. So, in one sense, this Iron Dome, which is a purely defensive weapon capability, is preventing a broader conflict and preventing more bloodshed. Incredible technology. And see, Palestinians across the region have joined an unprecedented general strike now, protesting the violence in a way that has never happened before. So, despite the fact that obviously there's been conflict in this region for decades, why do things seem different this time? Well, Diane, to, I, I agree with you that, in a lot of ways, this is just sort of a rerun of a bad movie, uh, the Israelis uh, going at it with, with uh, Hamas in, in, in Gaza. Um, but on the other hand, there are some things that are different. I think that the amount of civil turmoil, the uh, far-right Jewish groups attacking uh, and the uh, uh, Israeli Arab groups attacking each other in a way that I don't think we've seen before. So the internal turmoil, I think, is, is worse than it's ever been. But there's also a change in the geopolitics, and especially in the region. So so in the past, Hamas had had several benefactors, uh, Qatar, uh, parts of the Muslim Brotherhood. There used to be all sorts of countries that would help Hamas quietly. Now, given the Abraham Accords, uh, they really have no one except Iran. And so the enemy of the enemy, my, the enemy of my enemy, has made strange bedfellows here, where you have Shia Iran supporting Sunni Hamas, which is a Muslim Brotherhood offshoot, a, a Sunni uh, offshoot, uh, and they're supporting them not only with money. Uh, the Israelis are estimating $30 million per month, but with the missiles and the rockets that you see here are coming from, and that technology is coming from Iran. So very strange in that Hamas is much more isolated, but now much closer to Israel's enemy, Iran. And so Iran is using Hamas as a proxy to get at Israel. And so the real fight here and where the real focus will continue to be for the Israelis and the rest of the world is in the conflict between Iran and Israel. A very serious conflict there, no question. Steve, thanks for that analysis, helping us out on that subject. Stephen Ganyard, thanks very much. Thanks, Terry.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.